Hello friends, welcome to ISH. So we are back with our weekly revision module on current affairs section. So here we PIB, All India Radio, Rajya Sabha TV and Lok Sabha TV plus newspaper daily se jo bhi news bach jate hain unhe yahan pe cover karenge so ye week hoga hamara 6th of august se 12th of august ke beech mein okay aur inke beech mein jitne bhi current affairs aaye hain unhe hum yahan pe cover karenge okay so first news of the day about the global innovation index okay so basically the recent 2018th edition of the index on global innovation index a summit is being organized in new delhi okay and the event was organized by the collaboration of confederation of indian industry along with world intellectual property organization okay and department of industrial policy and promotion by collaboration between in these three organizations this event was organized in new delhi recently the index developed jointly by this is an important point here you should know which three organization used to collaborate to produce this particular index so cornell university first ice based business school set second and i i said wipo that is world intellectual property organization based in geneva by the collaboration of these three organizations this particular index is been released every year the top rankers of the 2018 are switzerland netherlands and sweden okay moving on india's rank has been improved from 60th in 2017 to 57th in 2018 the credit goes for this rank improvement to the ict service exports first because india has been ranked as the first nation in the ict service exports category okay and plus fourth in the labor productivity growth so these two parameters suits the most favors the most in the improvement of india ranking india's ranking from 60th in 2017 to 57th in 2018 okay so gii indicators that is global innovation indicators is basically grouped on two parameters that is innovation inputs first and the second is the outputs innovation outputs innovation inputs basically stands for the capture that stands for the efforts that made by the country to boost innovation every single particular country invest to boost its innovation capability that what stands for innovation inputs okay and the innovation output stands for the measure results of these efforts what this after effects of these inputs which every country used to commit what are the results of these efforts in terms of scientific publications patents trademarks production exports and other outputs so this is what stands for innovation outputs when these two things are clubbed together this particular index stands okay the outcome or the rankings are determined by clubbing these two particular indicators okay some facts related to with, with this innovation index india is second among middle income economics after china in the indicators that capture the quality of the innovation inputs and outputs okay plus the niti ayog recently has decided to join hands with the cii that is confederation of indian industry to develop a road map for top 10 rank in gii okay you should know these things moving on for, for the second news news of the day or basically of the week startup academia element alliance program okay startup india under ministry of commerce and industry okay anything related to startup india stands under ministry of commerce and industry has recently launched the startup academia alliance program so what this program basically stands for 
it is a unique member mentorship opportunity basically it is an mentorship opportunity between academic scholars and startups working in similar domains so by the collaboration in between academic scholars and the startup working in this in the similar domains the mentorship program will be carry forward where where this aims to reduce the gap between scientific research and in its industrial applications in order to increase efficacy and impacts of these technologies so basically to increase the efficacy and impacts these technologies which are startups which is different startups usually used to carry forward their different tasks to improve these outcomes of these technologies this startup academy alliance program has been created okay the first phase, phase of this program was launched in partnership with the regional center for biotechnology this is important and tari okay you should know what this particular program stands for okay what this particular program aims for and the partnership firms involved in it like regional center for biotechnology and the tari so these were the two of the news for this week's this week current affairs section moving on parivesh okay parivesh what is this parivesh so it is proactive and responsive facilitation by interactive virtuous and environmental single window hub was launched recently by the prime minister of india that is prime minister pm narendra modi so basically it is a single window integrated environmental management system okay it is a single window integrated management system launched on the occasion of world biofuel day so when this what was the date when this bio, world biofuel day was celebrated please reply in the comment section because there are certain facts related to this day as well we will look into that in future so moving on it has been designed developed and hosted by ministry of environment forest and climate change okay with the technical support from national informatics center so you should know that national informatics center we used to provide these technical supports in these kind of things okay moving on it has been rolled out for online submission monitoring and management of proposals seeking various types of environment clearances from central state and district level authorities okay so it enables project proponents citizens to review track and interact with scrutiny officers generate online mail alerts to state functionaries in case of delays beyond stipulated time for processing of applications so moving on for the other news fourth one of the day radio galaxy galaxy spotted recently a radio galaxy which is a r sorry a radio galaxy r colossal galaxy they are huge galaxies in fact okay with a super massive black hole in their center that actively accretes means accumulates gas and dust from its surrounding okay so th they are basically super massive black holes in their center that usually accumulates gases and dust from its surrounding okay they are very rare objects in the universe okay most distant radio galaxies ever known located at a distance of 12 billion light years was discovered by an indian telescope okay this is a factual thing you, you should know about this it was found using the giant metri wave radio telescope located in pune located at pune operated by national center for radio astrophysics okay with the use of this particular telescope which is located at pune that is giant metri wave radio telescope 
the indian scientists are able to determine this particular black hole about the what this particular black hole stands for that like it, they are usually huge accumulations of gas and dust from its surrounding okay as well as the most distant radio tele about the most distant radio telescope ever known which is about 12 billion light years away from our earth or we can say or from universe and it is a research projected by indian telescope with the use of an indian telescope okay moving on the distance of this galaxy was determined using the gemini north telescope in hawaii okay and the large binocular telescope in arizona let's move on this discovery is important for understanding of the formation and the evolution of galaxies so basically formation and evolutions are the major objectives which these kind of scientific developments used to look for okay let's move on further so fifth news of the day i guess ryukyu initiative what this initiative basically stands for Rikyo, repurpose used of cooking oil. Okay, it is an initiative that will enable collection and conversion of used cooking oil to biodiesel. Okay, which is the standard authority for assigned for this task, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Okay, FSSAI will look forward to this initiative. Will take care of this initiative okay that will enable collection and conversion conversion of used cooking oil okay basically used cooking oil will be collected and will then be converted into the biodiesel what this is what this initiative stands for and fssai will look forward and or we can say will work for on this particular initiative this initiative has been launched nearly a month after the food safety regulator notified standards for use of cooking oils okay fssai may also look at introducing regulations to ensure that companies that use large quantities of cooking oil hand it over to the registered collecting agencies okay so the companies which you usually involved in creating large quantities of cooking oil they should hand over that particular cooking oil to put certain registered co collecting agencies that will ensure those companies or agencies will ensure that that particular cooking oil should be converted into biofuel okay under this initiative about 64 companies are involved at 101 locations have been identified to enable collection of used cooking oil the regulator believes India has potential to cover 220 crore liters of used cooking oil for the production of biodiesel by 2020 through a coordinated action. Okay, this is a factual thing. You should know about this. So moving on, green pop propellants. So ISRO started using certain green pop propellants for use in future rockets and satellite propulsion systems okay it has made a beginning by developing an eco-friendly solid propellant to eliminate the emission of chlorine chlorinated exhaust products from rocket so basically to eliminate these particular thing that is chlorinated exhaust products from the rocket isro, ISRO has start developing the green propellants okay they will be used in the future rocket system and the pro satellite propulsion system as well. Okay, the propellants are ba basic based on glycidyl azide polymer, which is used as fuel. Okay, and the ammonium dinitramide, which is an oxidizer. Okay, moving on. ISRO is also carrying out various technology demonstration projects involved involving green propellant combinations such as 
हाइड्रोजन पेरोक्साइड एस टू ओ टू किरोसिन लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन एंड लिक्विड मिथेन सो दीज आर द प्रोडक्ट बेसिकली विच विल बी यूज टू डेवलप ग्रीन प्रोपोलेंट विच विल बी यूज इन द फ्यूचर रॉकेट एंड सेटेलाइट प्रोपल्सन सिस्टम ओके दट इज हाइड्रोजन पेरोक्साइड किरोसिन लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन एंड लिक्विड मिथेन इट हेज सक्सेसफुली डेवलप्ड इसरो सीन वट इज दिस इसरो सीन इट इज अ रॉकेट ग्रेड वर्जन ऑफ किरोसिन ओके अ रॉकेट ग्रेड वर्जन ऑफ किरोसिन विच इज यूज एन एज एन अल्टरनेटिव टू कन्वेंशनल हाइड्राजिन रॉकेट फ्यूल सो इन द पास्ट in the rocket system hydrazine rocket fuel used to be used but you sure recently developed isrosin okay that is a rocket graded version rocket grade version of kerosene now on from now on this will be used in the rocket system okay it has already used liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen combinations in cryogenic upper stage of gslb mark 3 prelims 2018 consist about a consist a question on gslb mark 3 so you should be aware of this thing that already usro has used liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as a combination in cryogenic upper stage okay of gslb mark 3 okay moving on so operation madad you must be aware of the fact that there is a huge huge flood operations being carried out in the state of kerala which is suffering from flooding in many parts due to incessant rainfall and release of excess water from idukki dam and other dams other minor dams as well but idukki is one of the biggest dams in kerala okay all five gates of this particular dam have been opened to release waters now okay so operation madad has been launched by the southern naval command at kochi this is to basically assist the state administration of kerala and undertake disaster relief operations due to unprecedented flooding experienced in many parts of the kerala so you should be aware what this operation madad basically stands for inhs sanjeevni has been deployed for rendering medical assistance by the southern naval command so which uh, a question can be asked that like what was the role of inh ss sanjeevani and there can be certain options like uh, first they, it is been used in operation madad or to carry certain goods to certain other countries or in this particular uh, I, uh, this particular armed vehicle has been used to tackle certain threats to india security or strategic sections so these can be they can be a question where the role of inh ss sanjeevni can be asked okay in future okay so moving on to the other news about the deputy chairman as you must be aware that harivans narayan singh was recently elected as the deputy chairman of the rajya sabha recently okay so article 89 is what stands in the constitution has the provision about the method of the election of deputy chairman of the rajya sabha okay you should be aware of this particular fact deputy chairman is elected from amongst the rajya sabha members okay 
questions can be asked that deputy chairman can also be selected from lok sabha or from any other state legislative assembly or not so in that case it will be totally a wrong of case okay deputy chairman can only be selected from amongst the rajya sabha members only okay moving on the chairman of rajya sabha that is vice president of india presides over the sessions of election of deputy chairman and the election procedure is being going on in the rajya sabha chairman of rajya sabha presides over the session at that moment okay he she presides over the proceedings of the rajya sabha in the absence of the chairman of the rajya sabha that is deputy chairman whosoever he or she is okay in the absence of the rajya sabha chairman that is the vice president of india he will stand and take care of the task of being a chairman at that particular time of the rajya sabha okay he she will perform the functions of rajya sabha chairman in case of a vacancy or when the vice president is discharging the functions of the president whenever vice president is discharging the functions of president or there is in vacancy in the vice president on the vice president seats rajya sabha deputy chairman will take up the task of rajya sabha chairman in a full fledged manner okay there is also a panel of six vice chairmen okay which is constituted every year so what is the role of this vice chairman vice chairman basically presides over meeting of the rajya sabha in the absence of the chairman or the deputy chairman okay so this is all about deputy chairman and its various roles and the role of vice chairman as well okay moving on recently a draft on the national health stack is being proposed okay the draft suggests that health data would be used for marketing defines the national health stack as a national electronic registry usable by both the center and the states across public and private sectors okay one of the components of the proposed project is to store every indian's personal health records okay is to store what the basically the task of this particular national health stack will be to store every indian's national health records okay this will involve like medical history about that particular citizen about its medication allergies immunization status laboratory test results radiology images vital signs personal stats such as image age and weight demographics and billing information and use of multiple health applications okay this is what the collection will be will stands for the collection of every indian's personal health records will consist of these things basically okay moving on various layers of national health stack will seamlessly link to support national health electronic registries okay this will be tasked to support national health electronic registries their coverage and claims platform a federated personal health records framework a national health analytics platform as well as other horizontal components the stack will embrace health management systems of public health programs and socio demographic data system okay moving on the population level base of such an it system would be individual health records lost through the health and wellness centers in rural areas and corresponding primary health care in the urban areas okay so this is a proposed initiative so it can be an important asset in the future examinations so moving on ease of living index okay so it is an initiative of ministry of housing and urban affairs to help cities assess their 
livability by the wis global and national benchmarks okay it ranks about 111 cities based on four pillars they are institutional social economic and the physical okay it is based on ease of living assessment standards which are closely linked to the sustainable development goals okay it encourages cities to move towards an outcome based approach to urban planning and management okay it is going to be launched as part of part of swachh bharat mission urban and swachh sarvekshan 2019 as well okay so moving on to the other news of the week may best recently an inv invasive agriculture pest that is known as fall army worm okay the scientific name stands as spodopetra frugi perda okay was discovered in karnataka by the indian council of agriculture research this maize pest is native to north america basically and it arrived in africa in 2016 okay and it has spread throughout central and western africa in 2016 and has proved very hard to control it is a humongous task to control this particular pest okay it usually prefers maize but can feed upon other 80 species of plants like rice it can even feed upon rice sorghum millet sugarcane and cotton okay the recent attack in karnataka is the first report of the pest in asia this is first ever attack report in asia throughout asia so karnataka can be a in a huge threat by this particular pest okay andhra pradesh and tamil nadu are at immediate risk from this particular pest india's tropical climate could allow the pest to thrive okay india's tropical climate can even shoot to for this particular pest to even propel at a humongous rate throughout india and throughout various state in future maybe it can happen okay it can be controlled with the use of certain insecticides through certain natural enemies as well or by the process of intercropping so they they can be controlled but they are hard to control definitely they are they, it requires a very hard task to control this particular pest so this is a very some case for karnataka okay so moving on relaxation in carbotage law okay what is this carbotage law basically stands for and in shipping it refers to the transport of goods or passengers between two ports okay between two ports within the same country by a foreign shipping operator okay like two ports like kochi port and the orissa port when there is a transportation of goods or passengers in between these two ports by a foreign shipping operator this is what we can consider as carbotage law recently the shipping ministry has recently lifted the restriction on foreign registered vessels on transportation of loaded or empty containers between indian ports so now foreign registered vessels are free to carry on this particular task from one single port of india to the other one okay so moving on earlier it was the prerogative of indian registered registered shipping lines only that paid taxes and were governed by indian laws okay but now foreign registered vessels are also been allowed to carry this particular task it is expected that the this move will lead to the cargo growth in india okay obviously obviously this will boost the cargo growth or the or even raise certain competitiveness of indian traders by reducing transshipment of cost 
by reducing shipment cost at a foreign port. Okay, for instance, Colombo recently, Colombo port thrives an Indian cargo containers that passes through it, and it is one of the major container transshipment hubs in the region. Okay, after the relaxation of rules, Colombo has cut the transshipment rates by about nine and a half percentage. Okay, allowing foreign ships to operate on local routes. So, what can be the repercussions or consequences? Like, it will probably probably help in the growth of cargo cargo growth in India. First, here, and the second, it will boost the competitiveness of Indian traders by reducing transport transshipment costs. So these are these two are the most vital points you should be aware of for this particular news okay and what this basically cabotage cabotage law stands for okay moving on world breastfeeding week so as we are aware that every year august 1st to 7th of august is celebrated every year as the world breastfeeding week to encourage breastfeeding and improve the health of babies around the world it commemorates the innocenti declaration okay this can be a factual question in your prelims paper so you must be aware what this innocenti declaration stands for which this particular declaration is signed in august was signed in august 1990 by government policy makers who world health organization unicef and other organizations so you should be aware that which particular which large organizations like who and unicef are involved in this particular declaration so who unicef and other certain government policy makers were involved in this particular task of innocenti declaration which is on which is regarding world breast breastfeeding okay this year world health organization is working with unicef and partners to promote the importance of helping mothers breastfeed their babies with within that crucial first hour of life so you should be aware that of a particular fact that wait a minute Wait a second. Sorry for the delay. So, the milk, which is fed to the newly born in the very first hour of its life, of his or her life, generally contains cholesterol. Okay, cholesterol. which cholesterol which usually contains rich which is rich in protective factors okay which is rich in protective factors protective sorry this is not working in my favor right now but it is protective okay which is usually very rich in protective factors as per unicef ireland france and usa rank lowest among all countries in the breastfeeding rates so a question can be asked and given in your option section that one of the option can be there that like usually ireland france and usa is ranked among the top most country which will be a wrong statement okay in that case since these countries ranked as the lowest among all countries in the breastfeeding rates okay moving on bhutan nepal sri lanka madagascar peru these countries have the highest breast breastfeeding rates so you you must be aware which countries are usually on the highest and the lowest parameter regarding the breastfeeding category okay so this is what the news stands for moving on to the other news of the day 
or the peak as well. So, wish wish varya PhD scheme. So, this scheme is recently initiated by the Ministry and Electron of Ministry of Electronics and for Information Technology. It is launched with an intent to enhance India's competitiveness in knowledge and intensive sectors. Okay, okay, it's quite clear, I guess. Its objective. What is basic? Base, its basic objective. It is to enhance the number of PSTs in electronic system design and manufacturing and IT IT enabled services sectors in the country. Okay, this is a, one of the major vital objective of this particular scheme. The salient features of this scheme. Are, it provides 25% of the fellowship amount than most of the other PSD schemes. Okay, about 25% more fellowship amount will be allotted for this particular task. First, second, part-time PhD candidates to get one-time incentive on completion of the PhD. Okay, this scheme also supports 200 young faculty fellowship in the areas of ESTM and IT ITES. With the objective to retain and attract bright young faculty members in these sectors okay so now last news of this particular week from 6 okay from 6th of august to 12 11th of august that is a hypersonic aircraft is developed by china recently okay China has successfully tested its first wave rider hypersonic aircraft that is known as Zing Kong 2 or Starry Sky 2 that can carry nuclear warheads. Okay, this particular aircraft can carry nuclear warheads. Okay, it has the capability to penetrate any current generation anti missile defense system. You must be aware that there are certain four countries like USA, Russia, Israel and after that India who used to have their anti-missile defense system but this particular hypersonic aircraft is capable enough to even penetrate those anti-missile defense systems as well so it must be a threat and a challenge to other defense industries defense industry countries like a countries which usually support their defense system at a humongous rate like USA, Russia, India, Israel, they will, they cert, it is this particular aircraft will certainly a challenge to these country, countries regarding their anti-missile defense system. Okay, this particular aircraft range is about 30 kilometers in altitude and it travels at Mach 5 to 5.6 feet. Okay. So this is it for this particular week. We will be back in the next week. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.